Okay, welcome to today's video. I just want to thank everyone who is watching these videos and subscribing and liking and commenting. It all helps out. It's cool. I like the interaction. This is very new to me, but it's awesome. So today I want to talk about how this thing fell into my lap, literally. I had a 2014 crew cab Chevy Silverado four wheel drive, six inch lift, blah, 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 20 by 12, 33 inch tires, um, intake, exhaust, uh, nice interior, everything, right? So I purchased that when I was, I purchased that in 2000, that was a 2014 and I got it in 2015. I got it when it was a year old. I bought it off a dude who took very good care of it and he put the lift on it before he sold it to me. He bought the wheels and tires that were on it. He bought them used off a guy and he just slapped them on and 100% he lifted it and put the wheels and tires on it just so he could sell it for what he sold it to me for, which was cool. It was fine. I purchased it. The tires were um, pretty beat up. So all I had to do right away was get new tires and I got a pretty good price on it. I bought that truck with 9,000 miles on it. And at that time I had a company vehicle. So I purchased that truck with 9,000 miles in 2015 and all I had to do was put tires on it, I put exhaust on it, I put an intake on it, I tinted the windows, um, but everything else was pretty good. The, the paint was clean, he kept it in the garage and all that. So I had that truck and it was cool. It, it was a gasoline engine, but it was, the, it was the big Vortec motor, so that was cool and it was fine. It was whatever. I was happy with it 100%. But my dad was the first one that got one, then my brother, then my brother-in-law about these Ram trucks. Uh, my dad got his, he got his custom ordered, he got the manual transmission and stuff like that. So when he got his um, was when I first saw these trucks. Then my brother got his. He got his first one, was a tradesman, and he got a pretty good deal on it. I want to say he paid like 40 grand or something for it. So. At that time, I had my Silverado, and um, I just wanted to see what the hype was about all these Ram trucks and the price and everything, because 40 grand for a Cummins was pretty good. So I went to the nearest dealership by my house, it was about 15 minutes away. I had just detailed my Silverado uh, the day before, and uh, I had no intentions on buying a truck, I had no intentions. I, I just wanted to go test drive one of these Cummins and see what they were all about. So I told my wife, hey, I'll be right back. I'm going to go take a drive real quick. I got to check something out. I show up. The truck is all detailed, everything. I show up, pull in the front. Salesman come walking out. Hey, what are you here for today? What are you looking for? And I legit told him, I want to see one of your Cummins, your new Cummins trucks. Uh, specifically a tradesman. I wasn't looking for anything fancy or anything like that. So one of the guys was like, all right, well, what are you looking to do? You, you want to buy one or you want to trade that truck in or, or what, you know? And I knew the Kelly Blue Book value of my Silverado at the time was about like, shoot, that was in 2017. So the Kelly Blue Book value on that thing was about I want to say somewhere between like 25 and 27 grand with what it with what it had done to it and the miles that were on it. I only had 18,000 miles. I only put 9,000 miles on it in two years. I told the guy, I was like, look, I don't know what I want to do yet, but if if you guys want to look at my truck and tell me what you guys will give me, let's do it, you know? So meanwhile, me and him jump in one of their tradesman trucks which is cloth interior uh no power seats it's super basic but it has the cummins new body style everything right just super basic i wasn't looking to get into anything fancy i wasn't even looking to get into anything at that point so we take it we jump in there he tells the guys to look at my truck we take it around the corner down the freeway come back 
And um, <laughs> this is such a coincidence because when we came back, there was someone blocking the driveway. So we had to go around the back of the dealership and to pull the truck in that I test drove real quick. We pulled around the back. When I pulled around the back, they were putting stickers on this truck. And they put like a big 2017 blowout sale, need to sell this weekend type of deal on the windshield. And I pulled around and I'm like, whoa, I noticed it was the Laramie, which the Laramie is pretty much fully loaded. Comes with the nine inch screen, leather interior, heated and cooled seats, all that crazy stuff, right? So I said, whoa, dude, um, what's up with that truck? And the guy was like, oh, that thing has been on the lot for like, I want to say like nine months or something now, and they need to sell it because after a certain point, these car lots, um, they don't own the cars that they sell. So the car lots pretty much have a time limit on how long they can have a vehicle on their lot before they start paying, I want to say, it's a crazy amount of interest or something that they pay on these loans to have them on their lot, right? And I, the month was coming up to where that interest was going to start hitting them. So they just had to sell it. So I'm like, wow, okay. So I asked the salesman, I was like, well, how much are they selling that for? And he's like, oh, I think like 52000 or something like that. And I was like, what? Okay. So that got me thinking. We parked the truck that I was, uh, that I was test driving. Then walked up to my Silverado and one of the guys there was like, hey, have you done anything? Thinking that I'm, you know, young and dumb. At the time I was 27, 28 years old. Uh, have you done anything to the cluster? We don't believe that, you know, your 18,000 miles is true. And I told him, dude, I'm not kidding. Whatever, I have a company vehicle. I've had a company vehicle for a while now. I never drive this thing. It sits in my garage. So he says, okay. So I knew the blue book value again. It was, it was around 25 to 27,000. I'm sitting there and he's like, okay, I'll, I'll be right back. He comes out and he's like, so how serious are you about getting into a new, a new truck? And I told him, well, how serious are you about paying for my truck? And I said, if you want to talk about the, the Laramie in the back that you guys are about to sell for like $52,000, I was like, come at me with this serious offer for this truck. And he goes, well, what are you looking for? And I said, 100% with no hesitations. I was half-assed kidding, but not at the same time. I was like, look, if you give me $30,000 for my truck, I will take that silver one in the back right now. Didn't know what I was getting myself into. He looks at me kind of crazy because I'm young, right? So he goes, okay, hold on. Can we do a credit check real quick? And I said, yeah, that's fine, whatever. I said, look, dude, I, I solely own my Silverado. So yeah, this is what I'm looking to get for it. So they come out and they offer me 30000 and one dollar. He offered me that, right? So I said, okay. I went in the office. I talked to one of the, I, I talked to that guy's boss and he goes, uh, he goes, so how bad do you want that silver truck? And I said, well, let me look at it, man. I haven't even looked at it yet, you know? So I looked at it, found out it was fully loaded, everything. Um, I looked at the sticker price and the sticker price on this truck was $68,000. So I asked the guy, I said, hey, why are you guys selling it so cheap? And he's the one that told me, well, we need to sell it. It's been on our lot for like eight to nine months. And coming up on the loan that we have for that truck, um, we're going to be paying a buttload of interest on it. So they needed to sell it that weekend. So I was like, okay, right? So I told him, hey, you give me 30 grand for my truck, I'll give you 51 for that one and I'll take it. Again, not knowing what he was going to say, right? So he went back, did the math, whatever. He said, okay, we could sell it for 51. How serious are you? 
And I said, hold that thought. Don't sell it. I'm going to go home. I live 15 minutes from here. It was, at this time, it was like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I showed up there at like 5. It was like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And uh, I come home and I told my wife, I was like, hey, um, I think I need to buy this truck. And she's just, I don't know if she took me serious or not, but um, after thinking about it, again, this is like, this is how I think about things. So I had a crew cab Silverado, four wheel drive, lifted, everything. It had low miles. Um, it was a gasoline engine. It was only worth like 25 grand at the time. Thinking about like investments and everything, right? So you kind of put your investor hat on if you want to say it like that. I told her, look, if I do this, they're going to give me 30 grand for my truck. I can't even sell it on Craigslist for that much, right? I, I had one guy wanting to buy it for like 24 grand and I was about to sell it to him. They gave me 30 grand. I put that 30 grand down towards this truck, 100%, whatever. I put some of my own money down on top to cut the payment down, right? Without getting into all those details or whatever, I ended up bringing this truck home. I had a 2017 Laramie. I was 28 years old. 2017 Ram 2500 Laramie sitting in my driveway and my payment on it was $200 a month. This brings me to my point. The reason why I did it was because I knew that the value of my other truck was depreciating and it was depreciating quickly, right? So now with me having this, I, whatever, literally traded my Silverado for this truck and put a little bit of money down of my own Brought this truck home, which the sticker price on it was $68,000. So I had a $70,000 truck and my payment was 200 bucks a month for five years, right? So I'm sitting here. It took a minute for me to kind of get over that because I felt like I robbed that dealership. And I don't know why or how or I, like it's kind of weird how things work out and stuff. I know there was kind of like a lot of, well, how do I say this? It's kind of a trip on how that happened, how young I was. Um, and again, like if I wouldn't, if that driveway wouldn't have been blocked and I wouldn't have had to go around the back of the dealership, I would have never seen this truck because that was a Saturday night and they were putting it out on a Sunday. They were putting all the stickers on it on Saturday night on the windshield and they were going to park it in the grass uh, Sunday morning to sell it that weekend. And that was a holiday weekend. We had Monday off too. So it was kind of like a blowout sale or whatever. But so me thinking about it was the depreciation of my Silverado was going down quickly and I wasn't going to be able to get my money back out of it. They paid me what I paid for that truck. So if you think about it, I had the Silverado for two years. I put a set of tires on it. I tinted it and I put a Flowmaster exhaust on it and 10,000 miles. And they gave me what I paid for that truck. So I dropped zero money on that truck and I was able to trade it pretty much. I don't want to say straight across, but it seems like it because they knocked, what was that? 68 to 51. The exact price was 51.9 what I paid on this thing. 68 to 51, that's 17. So let's say 16 and a half thousand dollars. They knocked off the top of this truck. And then I put my 30 grand down towards it. So then I needed to come up with 20,000. So I put a little bit of my own money down just so I could get the payment below. I told them I wanted my payment below 250 bucks a month. And uh, I didn't need to do that, but I just didn't want to outright pay for the truck right away because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it at the time. And um, no, do I need this truck to pull a massive trailer down the road no but as far as me investing my money in certain things this is one of the things that i can get my money back i again i only have i have less than ten thousand miles on this truck so if anything if 
anything hits the fan, I solely own this truck now. I paid it off quick. If anything happens, I can get, I don't want to say that I can get my full 50 grand out of it or whatever, but I can get pretty close to that. So, kind of letting you guys in my head and the way I think about things, I had no choice but to trade that Silverado in, if you look at it that way. Um, if I wouldn't have done that, I would have never came across a deal like this as far as knocking 16 and a half grand off of the top of a Laramie, right? I would have never gotten $30,000 for my Silverado. I would have never, I went from a 1500 to a 2500 In the case that we do get something like a trailer or something and I need to pull it, there's no issues there. That is just how I thought about it. I came home that night and I was thinking, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. What the fuck do I do? What the fuck do I do? I'm 28 years old, um, you know, and I'm about to come home with a $70,000 truck, but they're gonna give me a good deal on it. They're gonna give me more than what I could get for on Craigslist for my other truck. So, I just wanted to let you guys inside on that story because to me, that story is one of the most crazy things that has ever happened to me as far as like financially and stuff like that and uh, getting a deal and uh, selling my truck for more than what it was worth and all that just turned into this now. As far as me like putting wheels and tires, leveling kit, doing the front end work, uh, tuning it, stuff like that, that's just stuff that I want to do. I would have done it to my Silverado, you know, I would have switched those wheels and tires out for a nicer set. Um, I would have tuned it. Yeah, it's just, that's what came with this truck. And it's just super crazy to me. And only a handful of people know that story. When the right deals come, you have to hop on them. You can't, you, it was either, so I came home that night and it was either shit or get off the pot. Like I either had to go back the next morning. I told him, I was like, hey, I'll be back at nine in the morning when you guys open. It was just, super crazy to me and I just wanted to let you guys know that what I had to do what I didn't have to do to get this truck um, it's one of the craziest thing that's that's ever happened to me still to this day I trip on that story um, like I said only a handful of people know about it and I think when I tell people in person they don't really believe me but hey it's up to them that's really what happened that's how I came across this thing that's how it literally fell into my lap um, crazy how things work out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, leave them down below. Once again, every video I put out, I'm getting a couple more subscribers. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I've got some more stuff coming. I need to do an exhaust on this thing. I found a deal on a hood, um, a pretty sick hood that, yeah, I don't want to get into it, but we'll see. Um, and then a couple other things. So, let's get on, let's keep moving, head up, chin high, keep going.